Hi. Um, today I would like to talk to you about saints. Um, there are saints in many traditions. You have, of course, the Christian saints within the Catholic and Orthodox tradition, but you also have Islamic saints. But actually every religion has saints. So also Hinduism, Buddhism, even shamanism. Um, so before we talk further, I would like to go a little bit into the definition of what a saint is or isn't. Um, if we look at the principle how uh, a person is sanctified in the Christian tradition, um, this is actually due to example. So they have a look at a person's life and look at the decisions he or she made. And if these decisions are in line with what the uh, church sees as ideal, then a person becomes uh, uh, yeah, sainted eventually, if there are also um, uh, several miracles involved. So opposite to what most people think, the miracle is not actually what defines a saint. It is rather the choices they make in life. And this is a very important distinction to make. Because miracles can be created in many different ways. Miracles can be created by the divine powers through their angels. Um, they can also be created through demonic powers. And they can also be, well, basically charlatans who are just rip-off artists. Also, yeah, fabricate miracles. So the miracle itself is not very much proof of anything except that yeah, something inexplicable is involved, but what that inexplicable something is, is unclear. So it is indeed very important not just to look at the effects, like what is being done, what miracles are being performed, but also in what, um, yeah, what flow or what path is uh, proposed by the ones who are performing these miracles. Um, actually, most miracles are not so much of divine origin, but rather of a rather dark origin. Um, the reason for this is that the truly divine powers, they have very little interest in the body, in wealth, in sickness. They're much more interested in the progression of the soul and the well-being of the soul. So this is where they focus most of their efforts and their energies into having people's consciousness develop. But there's very little outside sign of this uh, development of consciousness. Um, of course, saints often testify how um, yeah, they realize uh, the, their earlier mistakes and they have a vision of how they should be. Um, but this is not often seen as the important part, but actually this is the most important part. Um, the, more, the lower powers, they're much more at home in the physical world, in the lower vibrations. So they tend to spend more time in performing physical miracles. And uh, because these are yeah, easily seen, easily yeah, uh, quantified, uh, they draw a lot of attention. And every saint, in a way, is trying to uh, guide people on a certain path. So often a saint is um, like an uh, example, an avatar of sometimes an egregore, a choir, a spiritual group who advocates a certain ideal, a certain way of spiritual transformation. And due to the choices they make in life, how they live their life, they try to uh, make this example as accessible as possible to the people around them, so other people can follow their path. So praying to a saint isn't just required trying to acquire some help, but it is very much also committing to a similar path as the saint himself or herself has followed in their lives. So it is something really to pay attention to, to what you're doing. Some religions say that because you are following the path of a saint rather than you know, working on your direct relationship with the Creator, um, that this is not a good thing. Um, I think the important here, thing here is to see if you can follow that path. Because I kind of have a different definition of a person who is uh, saintly. I don't so much look at if they follow to the rules and the principles of the church, 
but I look rather if they have achieved union with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the power which in a way um, guides us and reveals to us the will of the Absolute, the will of the Creator, and the will of the Master of the Universe, um, the Great Spirit, all different names for the, the highest being. Um, and if a person has attained this union, that's in a way the you know a part of the yeah, of the divine is revealed to them and they are able to surrender to it. This is what to me is saintly, what is holy. Uh, that's really made whole. So the, the rift between us in the fallen universe and the creator has been healed. So that to me is a holy person and in my definition a saint is by definition a, a holy person. And uh, since they have achieved the ultimate goal of what we are living for, this union, I find them examples very worthy of uh, following. But we have to look at ourselves and to realize, is our path indeed the same of that of the saint? Or should I follow a different path? Because the saint is also, on one hand, very powerful and very advanced, but also limited. Uh, because they have been given a specific task to guide people along that path and to support and to manifest their order with all its attendant angels and spirits who walk the path before to help the people who walk the same path. And there are, of course, yeah, innumerable ways to yeah, work on your relationship with the Divine. Uh, it's also important to notice that there are, if you would false saints. So people who have achieved a certain degree of spiritual development, who may have developed the power to, uh, to perform miracles, but have not achieved the union with, uh, with the divine. And these people can of course guide you, they've also worked, walked the path, they've also developed themselves and they can help you to develop in a very similar manner. But they cannot lead you to out of the fallen universe, because they themselves never left the fallen universe. So this is a very important thing to really note when you're working with a saint, like is this one who has actually achieved the heavens, or is this merely a miracle worker? In relating with the saints it is actually quite similar to relating with the, uh, with the groups, with the powers they represent. Um, so every power has a certain, um, uh, yeah, a certain principle which they uh, think is the most useful for your spiritual evolution. So either this can be the willpower, uh, control, discipline. Um, so this is, um, these are the lower vibrations, the lower chakras in your body you start to use. So in the, um, Hindu system, this would be the lower three chakras of your personality. And by learning how to control your, uh, your desires, your life force, um, yeah, you purify yourself and you can devote all your power, all your energy to your goal. Another tradition is to use the uh, middle three chakras, so the uh, stomach, the heart and the throat. So this is true uh, communication, true union. Uh, that you grow. So you try to become a bridge uh, between the, the higher beings and the lower beings and in a way to share yourself uh, with other beings and by the sharing you also become in a way fertilized with these higher seeds and nourished by the energies of the world around you so these seeds can grow in you, can blossom in you. So this is the mystical path. The first part was the magical path. Uh, the third part is using the higher chakra, so the throat, forehead and crown chakra. And this is to use your knowledge, your understanding of how things work, how... Um, so often the use of, of mantras, of rituals are typical also for this path. And um, there's also a way to say like, okay, I'm not so much going to focus on any single power center, but rather on harmony. So there should be balance in me. 
and this is called the hyperfantical path, the path of harmony, the path of union. And um, there are um, higher paths still, but they're not yet useful for us because as humans we find it hard enough to use one center of us, of our being, perfectly, let alone three. <laughs> so, but every saint also has this um, alignment, if you will, to a certain part of your being, which it can help to grow and uh, into perfection, into um, yeah, into following the divine example. So it's important to realize, like, what part of you do you use, or do you want to uh, improve and to make more receptive to the divine, and then yeah, pick an, a saint accordingly, or in a way a path of development accordingly. Uh, not all paths of developments have saints, um, because um, not all paths of developments are perfected, not all paths of, of development are complete. So some paths of development simply can't lead you out of this universe, hence no saints. That doesn't mean that such a path of development is not useful to you. It just means you have to realize that it's a, it's a temporary step on the way but that at a certain time you have to leave this path to choose another. So you can leave this, uh, this universe and to go back to the parental universe. Often uh, a saint will try to test you a little bit before um, yeah, going into a more deeper contact with you, before deciding uh, to make you one of his or her path. And often this is in a way of a test. It is not so much a test which in a way is like, okay, are you good enough? Are you pure enough? Because saints tend to be extremely merciful and they help people regardless of their yeah, degree of pollution or of their sins. But what a saint will do is to try to gauge a little bit what is your path, what are your choices? And do you choose truly to follow their path or are you actually choosing a different path? So often you get presented with dilemmas or choices or dreams if you start relating with a saint and there's usually not a right or a wrong. So for instance a mother and child are in danger, who do you save, the mother or the child? Um, and there are good reasons for doing either. Um, but depending on how you choose, what are the dominant forces, which are guiding you in your choices, a saint will decide you're more or less attuned to them and that it is uh, either their job to help you because you are part of their group or that you should actually, yeah, would be better off going and finding another saint to, uh, to guide you on your way. So the effectiveness of praying to saints is often very um, much due to which saint you pray to. If you pray to the correct saint, with whom you have a lot of similarity, then you will you tend to have a lot more effect of your prayers than if you pray to a saint who is rather different from you. So the li studying the lives of the saints is a very important tool for you in your uh, religious practice and to try to find people of a great similarity to the path you are walking at the, at the present time. Um, another important thing to note is that uh, saints, as I said, they are there for uh, spiritual growth. And uh, sometimes they're willing to do other stuff as well, so help you financially, help you with your health, help you with your relationship. But um, all of these are more little rewards or little signs that you're doing well. Because the focus of the saint, as sh should be your focus, is actually the, the perfection of the spirit so that it will eventually be able to do the same as the Spirit of the Saint, namely go into union with the yeah, guidance of the Holy Spirit, uh, of the Divine in whatever form or religion you see it. Um, this process is also um, kind of just a, making it more constant. So if a person prays well, the Holy Spirit will manifest itself. It's the same if a priest performs a ritual well, the Holy Spirit will also be present to perform a certain transmutation. During a prayer you should also receive blessing. Blessing is literally guidance 
or inspiration on how to act, what is right, uh, what is wrong, what is fitting. Um, and the difference between a person who prays occasionally and therefore is also guided occasionally and a saint is basically the amount of surrender. Um, for a person who is sainted, the Holy Spirit is present almost continuously and they have been so transformed by the presence of the Holy Spirit that it is no longer uh, very feasible or for them to rebel against the will of the Holy Spirit or to do things in a completely different way than the Holy Spirit would desire of them. And it is this process of transmutation due to the constant influence of the Holy Spirit which actually transforms a normal person slowly into a saint. But I have to say that many people who have become sainted were already born with quite a high state of awareness or quite high possibilities to achieve such a station. Um, well, I hope this is of uh, some help to you in your relations with the saints. God bless you.